Okay, I was on the very early state of uh, what we nowadays call internet at that time. Uh, it was called ARPANET or something like that. And uh, what I was, I was a chair of the Unix user group in Europe, which we had in about 26 countries, all national groups. And uh, I was located in Amsterdam, so I studied as a student in the University of Amsterdam and at a free university because uh, computer science was uh, not invented at that moment on the universities. So um, I was one of the first students who did their study in computer science. I was located at a mathematical center, which is a um, uh, math center, math research center for uh, yeah, universities. So we, what we did is only research. So I encountered uh, a problem with being on having uh, Unix systems all over Europe spread around and uh, to communicate with them. And the communication was first done with the uh, Unix system, the Unix to Unix copy program, the UCP. Uh, and uh, we initiated uh, to call everybody up, find a phone, or every computer up by the phone. And the anecdote at that time, it was that uh, uh, it was not expected that computers will ring up each other. So for instance, in France, you had to announce you with your name. <laughs> so uh, we invented some programs uh, to, uh, to spell their name, which was uh, MC Fax at that moment. And uh, we draw email mainly and some uh, Usenet news uh, systems all over the world or all over Europe towards to some systems in the US. So that was the first step. So that was building the infrastructure for basically Unix systems at that time frame. Um, that was, we announced the uh, ONET, European Unix Network, in uh, April uh, 1982. So you must think of um, the time that computers were huge, cooling systems were huge. And f to give you a picture, um, the uh, RM05 disk, that was uh, 67 megabyte of disk space was the size of a table refrigerator and costed about uh, 40,000 uh, uh, euros. So that's about $70,000 uh, running on 380 volt. So uh, if you compare that with a uh, USB stick, <laughs> you can imagine uh, what the difference and what the evolution uh, has been. Even so, for uh, internet, F uh, our problem was basically that uh, the TCP IP protocol was not allowed to be researched and to be studied because we, uh, the formal science decided that it uh, should be only uh, the OC uh, standard, which was a very complex uh, standard, very complex and uh, we didn't want that. We wanted a very easy to do and to dissimulate all over Europe protocol, and that was TCP IP. So we tried it to connect to the ARPANET, and that was the Ministry of Defense. And at that time frame, we were in, let's say, a cold war with Russia, <laughs> and we were not allowed to uh, attest to that. So we suddenly set up from uh, phone lines with uh, slip protocol, TCP over uh, serial lines, uh, and started to do uh, internet. Um, originally, we uh, started with about 10 sites spread over Europe, and within two years, that's about 1984 I'm talking about, uh, we had about uh, 300 uh, sites connected. Um, from there, we um, uh, started to have a uh, foundation in, in Holland. That's the NLNet Foundation, and we started to do internet service provision. 
and that was uh, first on for academics and associated uh, institutes because we wanted to keep the cost very low and uh, later uh, uh, we entered the commercial world uh, trying to hook up everybody who wanted to be hooked up and to dial in and we tried to do that the service provision so that's in short how it came from let's say an academic environment towards to uh, yeah commercial environment um, we started uh, yeah we were uh, we had also our uh, normal work somewhere else in the research mainly and um, we did the internet service provision as a commercial institute uh, yeah uh, as a as a side effect but the side effect was it was competition and we had we ended up with about 180 people as employees and that in your free time is uh, not possible so we said okay is this our world is this what we wanted to do no we don't want that and uh, we ended up selling uh, nlnet that's the backbone the service provider in in holland to uh, uunet worldcom and uh, ended up with uh, a lot of money and no service provision anymore so we could do uh, whatever we, what we wanted and the main factor was to bring back our achievements our technology achievements back to the community who did that the technology people and uh, said hey we want to do to stimulate new projects on the internet uh, and did that with about a budget of about one and a half million dollars per year uh, open source projects should it be and should be stimulated and that was uh, the second lifetime of our work in, in Holland. I didn't, I, I'm speaking about we because uh, internet was not possible without a lot of people who did whatever they went and I was just in charge as a chairman, that's all. Now, breakpoints were that uh, academics uh, went over and left their uh, thing that it should always be OC. So the, um, the academic networks went to TCP IP. That was, one, that was the first break. Uh, second break that everybody could dial in for low, very low cost. So everybody could uh, interact and communicate via internet with each other and uh, other break uh, points were um, uh, HTTP mainly from CERN uh, and uh, Alta Vista who was making the search engine uh, and later yeah, Google earned a lot of money but Alta Vista did the, uh, the breakthrough I think the, the weather has still to come. Many people will think different. Um, the Thunderware which is coming up is uh, uh, our uh, privacy, privacy concern. To keep our privacy, to keep your identity and to make it uh, and to keep it uh, secure. And that, uh, that awareness is not by the user is even not by the technicians there uh, and a lot has to be done there and governments will uh, will have their own opinion about that as they usually have and some of the signs for Thunderware is uh, now the current thing with NSA for instance uh, and uh, also uh, yeah the uh, there's a lot of commerce going on web shops and they're not secured Actions, the main action is awareness and the real awareness, not fear, but awareness and what can we do? Help. Uh, some uh, entities do that, some institutes do that. Uh, ISOC is, an, is a big example. Uh, uh, RIPE is another example. Um, but also uh, other groups like the AFF is doing a lot of work and making the awareness hey this is what you can do do it and and 
and yeah. try to evolve from that. Uh, other things are uh, uh, new technologies like uh, DNSSEC and uh, IPv6. We are talking about so many years already about it and it's not there. DNSSEC is, in, in, in Holland at least, is 25% of the websites are on the, of, the, of the domains are on uh, DNSSEC and that's not a lot. I do a lot in, um, in aesthetical uh, hacking uh, to make awareness for, hey, you can improve that. I uh, make presentations on that. Uh, for instance, I, do, I did a survey on uh, the SSL configurations. Uh, if you know what SSL is, <laughs> SSL is HTTPS, but that's a, one part of it. Um, on the SSL configurations of all the sites in Holland. And I categorize them in uh, government, semi-government, um, in education, academics, uh, in healthcare, in web shops, and in security companies, and in banks. And the banks, uh, I did um, two of the banks in Holland, and I did that two years ago, the presentation, two of the banks were furious and were sending uh, lawyers to my. The lawyers don't help to improve it. <laughs> so, <laughs> But they're, 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 they're okay now, they're better. So they improved. Banks are improving. Still there are a lot of problems with uh, a mixture of HTTP and HTTPS, uh, but uh, it's improving a lot. Healthcare is a shame. Education, and I tested the computer science education departments, it's a shame. So there is a lot to be learned there. The technology is there, but the configuration and the know-how should be there. So it's education, and there's a lot to be done there. So the way to do that, to help that improvement, is doing presentations, doing uh, shock effects, and that helps. And then you get to the paper, they make nonsense out of it, but okay, the thing is set there. <laughs>